All right, so finally, now that things have settled down, we're going to go ahead and test this out. This is the Axis Flying Conversion Kit for the DJI Avada. I'm not gonna lie, this video is taking me a lot longer to make than I anticipated, simply because we had so many problems when installing this, we actually burnt up an ESC. But in today's video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions as this is going to be the very first time I've ever even flown it. Let's get started. Alrighty, so uh, this is gonna probably be a fast flight because I can hear thunder in the backdrop. Uh, we are going to be using the goggles Integra. The last time I tried these out here, I was having issues where it wasn't letting me fly very far. Um, we are out of controlled airspace, so just in case, I did go ahead and bring my phone so that way we can connect it up um, and make sure that works. I also have a Mini, th uh, Mini 11 on, on here as well. Uh, I will connect these actually up to the phone. I'm going to connect it to um, the Android device so we can see how this works. I really hope this flies good. Um, like I said, haven't flown this at all before. So this is going to be uh, an interesting test to see how this actually does. And let's see. All right, so we'll connect to there. Let's go ahead and power this up. Also, side note, this is the first time I've flown FPV in a long time. So at least we're not flying this over water. We got Tony on the camera. So we got a spotter. So all you little uh, FAA Nazis can fuck off. All right, looks good there. Um, we'll start recording here. There we go, we're recording. It says I'm not using a bound device, but See what happens. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy shit. Tony, did you see that? Yes. We're in manual. This thing scoots, dude. All right, that I was not expecting. Wow. Holy shit, that thing, like, I wasn't, I was expecting it to be a little more sluggish, like a typical Avada. But uh, that was surprising. The power we have now, like coming out of like more sharp dives is insane. Yeah, this is wild, man. Does it sound louder to you, Tony? No, different pitch. Yeah, it's, lower it's a, pitch. Does it sound lower? Yeah, I'll show you with mine. It's, mine's a screamer. I feel like the battery is depleting fast as shit, though. I'm already down to 36% on the battery. How long have we been flying? Hasn't been that long, right? A couple minutes. I keep getting a warning about a not a bound device. I'll have to look into that. Let me bring it up here so we can actually take a look at it. I'm at 30%. The battery is like losing a percent every second or so. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna bring it in and land. Wow, I'm already down to 25% on the battery. <laughs> that was crazy. How long was that flight? Two minutes and 27 seconds. Did I replace this? I don't think I replaced the battery. Let me do it again and I'll replace the battery this time. But that, um, that was, um, that caught me off guard, dude. <laughs> um, let me do a screen recording too on this because I don't have uh, goggle telemetry because I don't have an SD card in the goggles, but um, wow, that thing took off crazy. Like it has a lot more power. Even with this GoPro on top, it, you can definitely feel like there's just more thrust. Um, it doesn't feel like an Avada anymore, which I think is the most interesting aspect of this. Let me see, the Samsung's got screen recording. 
So let me let me start recording the screen. Uh, I'll start recording. Flying this again. I'm gonna take off over here. Let's go over here this time. Cause that thing almost hit me in the face. So let's do this. We're gonna fly manual. All right, so now we've got 90%. I'm gonna take off at about 10%. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll bring it up to 15. Wow. That doesn't take off like a Nevada anymore. <laughs> up, up and away. Yeah, for real. This thing is um, zipping. I noticed that it just feels so much more fluid. sounds different. It sounds like it's got a deeper tone. Mm -hmm. Flight wise, I mean, the flight characteristics are definitely changed. I feel, feel very confident coming down from dives with the GoPro on. So we got 87%. So I want to just see like detriment wise, like what this is doing to the battery life. Cause that I think is what uh, most people would probably weigh out whether it be pros and cons to actually do this. I will just say definitively, like it's not worth doing this. I, like I said, we damaged an ESC while doing this process. So we had an ESC get damaged um, during the install of, of this ESC. It does feel slightly more controllable. We are now at 78%. Let's see if we have any issues with range though, because remember the uh, antennas and everything are in a little bit different position. Range wise, we're good. Starting to lose a little HD quality. Let's stay along this little trail here. 33 megabits. It's not seemingly getting blown around by the wind as much either. So that's a good thing. Man, this thing just screams. Coming out of like these dives, this thing just feels more like a, a built loop than it does a converted Avada. Wow. Like the fluidity this has, even with the GoPro on top, is freaking bonkers. So let's see, can we blast through there? Yeah, we are. You know, I haven't flown in, oh, motor overloaded, it says. Oh, uh, now it's gone. I haven't flown in a little while. Like, I haven't flown FPV, but I attribute it, the reason why I fly well after not flying a while is because I didn't start in a simulator. I just always practice in real life. You never forget how gravity treats you. I don't care what anybody says. Wow, this is crazy. So all the footage is gonna be out of the GoPro. We're not gonna include any of the footage out of the uh, Avada because if you're doing this, you're pretty much doing this because you're gonna put a GoPro or something on here. You're gonna use this more professionally. So because of that, we are using uh, the footage right out of the GoPro. And man, it feels smooth. Really not a lot of oscillations to speak of. Come around this tree here. Wind's blowing a little bit more, and I don't even notice it to be honest with you. Range seems good. I am screen recording on the uh, Galaxy, so hopefully that keeps recording. We're at 45%. 
don't really know how long we've been flying. How long we've we been flying, Tony, do you think? At least four or five minutes. Yeah. I'll go ahead and bring it in. I think this has been sufficient. I've only gotten, we're at 42%. Only got really one warning about overloading on the motor. It does sound like just nasty though. Let me bring it in, I'll hover it over here in manual so you can hear it and see it. This is a manual. Get a little oscillation, like a, there's a little bit more vibration than I normally would get. But let's just go ahead and do full speed here. Battery sag starting to hit at 34%. All right, so we're at 34%. I'll bring it in. I don't want to try to rip the battery too hard here, but go ahead and bring it in. Alrighty, so that was the first flight with the DJI Avada and the Axis flying kit. Now we actually flew it twice. Both times, I gotta say, there's definitely a hell of a lot more power on this unit now with the bigger motors. Now these are three inch motors versus the two and a half inch motors, also a higher KV. Uh, a little bit more rigid due to that carbon fiber frame, and that could be why I'm getting some vibration in the camera itself. However, even with that vibration, that should, you know, with stabilization, it should go ahead and clean some of that up. We did use the Hero 11 Mini on top, so we'll also take a look at that and make sure there was no vibrations. Now, for my kit, we went ahead and customized this a little bit. We, um, we cut out a port, made a port so we can actually power our uh, Hero 11 bones, or I should say Hero 11 bones, that doesn't exist, strike that. We can power our naked GoPro off of this as well. Um, I will say from a perspective of repairability, if you damage this, it's gonna be a little bit harder to repair. You would think because this is carbon fiber, it's gonna be easier, but it's actually, it's not. If you damage something, it's, it's, it's gonna be a little bit more time consuming to repair this. During the process of installing this kit, I don't know what happened from just soldering to the ESC. I think maybe one of the pads got a little bit too hot and one of the motors would spin up and immediately stop. So we didn't know what to do. We thought maybe we had a bad motor. We tried a bunch of different things, but ultimately it ended up being that we needed to replace the ESC. You can get these ESCs for like 55 bucks from Cloud City Drones. So really not a big deal there, but it is something to keep in mind that the best way to install this is to cut the wires, not solder directly to the ESC. So my recommendation is just to splice your wires and not, not cut, not solder directly to the ESC on the Avada if you decide to go down this route. The total install time to do this took about three hours and that's without any of the troubleshooting. If I added up all the time that it took to do this install with having to replace the, the, the ESC, um, trying to figure out some of the troubleshooting things, we probably got about five, six hours into this uh, install, which it sounds crazy, but when things go wrong, you don't have beta flight or anything to really tell you what's happening. So I guess the big question is, is this worth doing? And I can honestly definitively say no, because you're not really gaining anything other than a little bit more power. This is not gonna do anything that a pre-built Cinewhoop isn't already going to do for you. Yes, you have the fail safes of the GPS to return to home and the auto hover, but depending on what software you use, you can also add that into it yourself without the need of doing this conversion, which makes things very complicated. Also, Axis Flying's instructions on their website and in their pamphlet isn't really the best. If I'm just being honest with you, it sort of sucks. So that's something that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. But let me know what you think. Do you think converting your Avada to the Axis Flying conversion kit is worth it? There are some janky things about this. Um, but you still have flight restrictions. You still have to have ADS-B. You still have to have remote ID on this. So really, are you gaining anything? I don't think you are. So because of that, I don't really think it's worth doing. It's cool, it looks great, but these ducks are more fragile than the Avada's stock ducks. And overall, if you break something, it is gonna be a lot harder to fix. But that's my overall thoughts on the Axis Flying Avada. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Stay original. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, homie, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my success has only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check.
I want the money to Paris.